beautiful animals. Okay, Brian, let's go fishing. <laughs> let's talking for now. There we go. That's a little more like it. There we go. That's what we like. Oh, this is just so much fun. They don't take direction very well. On the egg pattern? One more. One more. Yeah, but that was half-hearted attempt there. We got him. Yours took the egg too, right? Yeah. That's uh, interesting. Nice fish. Okie doke. Because a lot of the equipment that we already have for trout fishing is going to be usable for this. Uh, other than, you know, maybe under extreme conditions. I mean, our neoprene waders, our vest, uh, rain jacket, and everything is all, is all usable. One thing I really want to stress is a very important piece of equipment, though, is, is good quality polarized sunglasses. I mean, they're an absolute necessary item you know for successful steelhead fishing not so much that we're always trying to spot fish but just allows us to see in the water to find these ledges pockets deeper areas where these fish where these fish hold it's just really important that you have glasses and also for eye protection too it's, it's absolutely as far as uh, being in the guiding business I, I couldn't be a guide without polarized sunglasses that's all there is to it yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, the stuff that you already own is going to be applicable for, for this fishing. Uh, you may have to make a few adjustments in, in your tackle, but uh, another thing to mention is that uh, a lot of this can be done in, in fairly extreme weather conditions, and you want to be sure that you're properly dressed for the weather. You want to wear the right wicking materials underneath your waders. Uh, you want to have the right layering pieces, and you want to have some good rain gear and stuff because if you're uncomfortable out there fishing, you're not going to be happy happy and you're probably not going to be successful. There we go. You want a hand or you got it? Okay. In the 
this uh, slow moving pool like we've got right here, it's through that float, that float system that really helps us do a lot better here than uh, just tight lining with a lot of split shot or a, a chuck and duck rig or what have you. That, that, whereas if we were just tight lining, that split shot would pretty much go right down to the bottom and sit there. We wouldn't get a good drift. And that, that float keeps the flies and the split shot suspended off the bottom and allows us to get a drift through this slow pool. And as you see, there's quite a few fish holding here. Boy, it pays off. One more time. a couple of things that uh, you'll see us use in this video and Jerry and I both feel these are pretty handy when it comes to steelhead all throughout the world. The first of which is your standard trout net or your little bass net is probably not going to work for this. Good idea to get yourself a larger net and this is a pretty neat one. This net is basically indestructible. I think it'll hold what something like a hundred pounds something like that and uh, which should accommodate most of the steelhead you'll catch. Uh, but this particular one has a scale built into the handle. That's really neat. I can net the fish, hold it up, give me an idea how much it weighs, and quickly release it safely. Another item that I've found real handy is this little mesh bag, uh, and it just is a great thing, you know, for tailing fish and handling them when you're getting out of the, getting them out of the net. It's called a landing hand, and it, it weighs nothing. You can clip it anywhere on your vest or jacket, uh, and it just makes, uh, you know, working with the fish a whole lot easier. Yeah, you can, you can reach in the water and grab the fish by the tail and get a really positive grip um, and be able to you know, lift him up out of the water, get the fly out of his mouth and release him. We've used those extensively in Alaska on big fish. They're, they're really handy for salmon and, and really all large game fish. Yeah, both the net and this item here will really help you handle the fish and, and cause as little damage to them as possible. If you get a big fish and you're holding it and he slips and falls down onto the bank and stuff, you know, you could injure the fish and hurt them. And basically, you know, we want to recycle these fish. We want to, you know, release them and catch them again if we can. Absolutely. Oh, 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 oh. That's one here. That's one here. Ah, I'm off. Sorry. We had it. We went through yeah. the double. We did it. Watch out. Coming your way. Gotcha. Ooh, big fish. Big fish? Big fish. I might want you to come over here, Brian. No problem. This is a hog here. Okay. If I can keep mine. Probably got him on the back fly on 5X. Monster steelhead on 5X.
double digits here if we can get this one in. Mason the guides, I mean, we got all the good stuff back in the wall. There's a little slush on the water. Oh, double digits. Double digits. Oh my goodness. Oh, that is a thick fish. This is a classic manistee nail here. Yep. Got shoulders on it like a football. Oh man. Okay, okay, okay. Oh! <laughs> Bottom out the scale. Man. What a bruiser. Woo! Man. That is a bruiser. Big, awesome. big fish. Awesome fish. Yeah. Oh, God. Okie doke. Wow. That's almost too much to handle. What a fish. Lake Erie. It's all right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> what a fish! Woo. 